Well, well, well. If this wasn't a surprise, the Finishers' Championship was the combat sporting event set to break all kinds of records. We were going to see four of the biggest, world's strongest men throw down in a cage and fight each other under an MMA rule set, something we've never seen before. An absolute crazy spectacle, which certainly would have been entertaining. Well, it might all be crumbling down as we speak. It's looking like we won't get the chance to see Eddie Hall, Martin Ford, Brian Shaw and Mitch Hooper fight each other. Now, there's been loads of red flags on the build-up to this event, which I've been incredibly vocal about in my videos covering the build-up. And just to name a few, their Instagram, they initially had a video up. It looks like it's being taken down now. So in that video, they were saying how they're going to break all pay-per-view records. They're going to be given the biggest prize pool ever given to fighters, which I think was $300 million. They said they were going to build a social media following of a billion followers, and they were going to break all kinds of pay-per-view records well one thing that i didn't even realize and forgive me if one of you guys mentioned this in the comments this event was meant to be hosted on the 17th of february this month 15 days away but what other event has taken place on the 17th of february tyson fury versus alexander usuk that's not really a smart move you're going head to head with another fight event on the exact same night where two of the biggest names in boxing are fighting each other so even with all the saudi arabia money there's no way the finishers championship was going to be able to out compete Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. No way. And you could maybe make that argument if their social media was popping off and they were posting multiple times a day, kind of like the way one championship do and the way the UFC do. But you've got four social media posts and also, have you noticed, all the fighters' posts are gone from here. So originally they had Eddie Hall on their Instagram. That post is now gone. We also had some other red flags. In Brian Shaw's last video, he sounded a little bit dubious that the event was going through. He said, hey, as far as I'm aware, the fights are meant to be going ahead. We're just waiting for the go-ahead. It's time to just put out some of the content, put out some of the training content, and uh, let you guys in because the fight doesn't go forward at this point. It is not my fault. It will be completely on uh, the promoter's side. So, so Brian Shaw kind of sounded doubtful that it was going to happen. And here is something else very interesting. I reached out to Eddie Hall's team about four or five days ago just to ask if Eddie Hall is doing any sort of interviews because I'd love the opportunity to be able to do that with Eddie and especially for the fact that no one was really covered in the build-up of this fight. So I thought maybe I could reach out to Eddie Hall, Brian Shaw, get them on the channel and talk about the fight a bit. Well, I got an email back and Eddie or Eddie's team, if you're watching this, I hope you don't mind me sharing but now that it seems like this event has fallen apart, hopefully it should be okay. So my initial email was something simple like, Hi, I'm covering the build-up to the Finishers' Championship. I was wondering if Eddie Hall would like to do a little 5-10 minute interview. I don't mind coming to you because he trains around the corner from me. And this was the email that I got back. Hi Sean, thank you for your email. Currently, Eddie is not permitted to do any interviews as there is still a few things to be finalised. That's interesting. This was three days ago. So we're talking 18-19 days out from the fight. And there's things to still be finalised? Doesn't make sense. Once the above has been done, we will keep you in mind. Thanks for reaching out. We truly appreciate the support. And I know that I'm starting to get some high-level people and fighters and athletes watch me channel. So if there's anyone out there who's got more information on the behind-the-scenes inner workings of this finishers championship, then reach out to me. Drop me a DM on Instagram. So 18, 19 days out from the fight, Eddie Hall's team is saying that there's still a few things to be finalised. Very weird. Now that brings us to this legend, John Wayne Parr. Ten times Muay Thai champion and his total record is 149 fights, 110 wins, 56 KOs. John Wayne Parr is an absolute legend of the game. Well, I didn't know, but John was actually set to fight on this event. Seven days ago, John put this post up and forgive me guys because I've only just seen this like yesterday or the day before. So I presume that this is the screenshot of the contract agreement that John Wayne Parr received to fight. So the company will pay 20 million US to be dispersed on the following schedule. One million dollars, 16 weeks out from the fight. $5 million seven days out from the fight. $14 million paid the next working day after the fight bout. And then this was another picture he posted. The people who were set to fight on this event. As I say, I didn't even know John Wayne Parr was meant to be fighting. And then we did see Mike Perry and Darren Till somewhat associated with this event, but we didn't know in what capacity. And this is just pure false advertising. You've got some of the biggest names in combat sports history, like Conor McGregor, John Bones Jones, Floyd Mayweather, 
Khabib, like these athletes have not posted or talked about this fight event whatsoever. So with these pictures, this is what John Wayne Parr said. Six months ago, I received a WhatsApp notification from Qatar asking if they can speak to me about a fight opportunity. The promotion was going to be a Masters with all the retired superstars on one event. Names like Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, GSP, Khabib, Darren Till, Mike Perry were being mentioned with the opportunity to be on the same card. That's kind of the biggest red flag right there because these fighters are already in contracts well conor mcgregor is still under contract with the ufc so there was no chance of him doing it khabib although is retired if khabib still has fights on his contract i'm sure he's still not allowed to go with another promotion until he's fulfilled those fights could be wrong darren till he's obviously completely left the promotion now mike perry is with the bare knuckle fc so these are massive red flags i didn't know all these names were getting mentioned under this promotion to make it even sound more legit the superstars of strongmen eddie hall martin ford Brian Shaw and Mitch Hooper to do a four-man elimination on the same night. I was sent photos and video from inside the 45,000-seat venue that was going to be used to host the promotion. On social media, everyone was in camp with all the strongmen in the gym learning MMA preparing, as we've been covering on this channel. Eddie Hall even went viral for his MMA training, taking a head kick in Spartan. The contract sent, I was offered $20 million dollars which would have been 30 million Australian. The first million was to be paid 16 weeks out from the event. Now, John Wayne Parr, he's a very successful fighter. Now, John Wayne Parr is retired, but when you're being offered $20 million to come out of retirement, you're going to come out of retirement because you're not making that type of money in Muay Thai or kickboxing. Unfortunately, as the event got closer, the excuses from the promoters started coming in on why no payments. This kept happening until this week when we all received an email informing us the event is now being postponed until a later date. So regardless, the event has been postponed. Even though the promotion is no longer happening, it was a fun few months dreaming of becoming a millionaire and fighting on the greatest event in history. Now it's back to reality, holding pads, hoping I can afford lunch. Ah, uh, that's sad to hear. John Wayne Parr might be exaggerating, but this is the unfortunate reality of a lot of fighters. They have big, long, successful careers, over 100 wins, 50-odd knockouts, and they still just have to hold pads in a gym when really they've worked their asses off and you could say they deserve a lot more. We've also got Lee Liam Harrison, he chimed in. They asked me to be a part of this. I knew it was nonsense though, and I just ignored them. I think the moments where it seems like nonsense is when you've got these fighters like Darren Till, Mike Perry, and then posters like these with Conor McGregor, John Jones, Khabib, Floyd Mayweather. It's like they were just trying to use these fighters' names to try and drum up a bit of excitement for the event. And a few people have commented about the money. Being a millionaire is so overrated, so I'm told anyway. I'm still waiting to try it for a little bit. Money actually doesn't make you happy. Money just lets you do things that makes you happy. I think the thing that makes you happy is experiences and memories and being able to pay the bills without any stress so you don't need millions to do that but being a millionaire allows you to obviously have a lot more freedom and therefore be able to make more memories and have more experiences that you want to do and then a few days later he put this post up and this right here must have been the initial announcement of the event john wayne parr has said part two of the greatest event that never happened speaking with a gentleman on the phone in qatar he was explaining that they wanted to break the record for the most prize money ever given out to fighters on a single show they had reserved 300 million away in prize money and they were offering me 20 million to fight. Over the weeks, I was sent links to articles about the event and how they recently signed four of the strongest men to compete in a four-man eliminator against one another. I was sent photos and videos from inside the 45,000-seat Khalifa International Stadium they were planning to use for the event. After speaking with the promoter, they had arranged an opponent who was a local star in Qatar that I was to be matched with. At one stage, the promoter was even going to put 100k in my bank account as a bonus for signing the contract. Unfortunately, that's when the red flag started to appear when the money never went in. But for so much money, I was holding on in case there was a 1% chance it came true. I completely understand that. Even up to four weeks before the event, there was still not a single fight poster or press conference made. It was only a few days ago, all the fighters received an email informing us that the event will be postponed until a later date. As a rational person, it all sounded too good to be true. But with Saudi Arabia spending so much money on boxing, I was told the 300 million spent on this event would help attract tourism to Qatar. Now this event is being postponed. If anyone else would like to make me a $20 million offer, please shoot me a DM. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing with events like these in Saudi Arabia. It doesn't actually sound unrealistic to happen because Saudi are just dumping and throwing money at these events. So the event itself was believable. It's just all the red flags that were showing up on the build up to the event. Now I commented on this and I said, wow, I've been covering this on my YouTube channel and I've been constantly saying something doesn't seem quite right about this. There's no activity 
activity on the social media. And when I reached out to Eddie Hall, they said they can't give any interviews until it's actually confirmed. And that was only a couple days ago. This would have been epic. JWP responded to me. He said, I've been talking to both Eddie and Martin Ford on the DMs about the event and how exciting it was going to be on the same card. We were all promised deposits into our accounts. Dates came and went for all of us and we all got told excuses of why the money never went in. It was four weeks out and I was asking, it's a 45,000 seat stadium. When are you going to release the fight posters and matchups? But nothing. Watching all the strong men training in MMA preparing and people like yourself covering the event definitely helped sell it for me that it was going to happen. John, I'm totally with you. I can't even imagine your frustration. I can feel your frustration through these posts, especially when you're a retired fighter. You've taken all these punches throughout the years, getting paid buttons for it. And then there's a potential chance of 20 million on the line. I probably would have believed it myself. And I found this interesting. Someone said, you seem to be the only one outing them. All the other guys, Eddie Hall, Brian Shaw, Mitch Hooper's social media, is uh, quiet about it. Someone said this is the combat sports equivalent of the fire festival. It's a good analogy. So there we go. It looks like this event is dead in the water. I'm going to personally reach out to John Wayne Parr and Eddie Hall, Martin Ford. The strong men probably won't see me DMs, but it's worth a shot just to see if they want to comment on it at all. I've got a feeling that everyone will want to stay quiet on this and it'll just slowly fizzle out and we'll no longer see much of the MMA training, which I actually was really enjoying. I like the spectacle side of things. I mean, there's not much else I can say. What do you guys think of this? Comment down below. I'll read as many comments as possible. Make sure you drop a like on this video and I'll see you tomorrow.